Hey there everyone, welcome back to Ask a Naturalist. Happy Monday to all of you. My name is Rebecca and I am an environmental educator at the Schuylkill Center and for the past few, about a month now, maybe more, we've been doing Ask a Naturalist here live every Monday with different topics where you all can ask your questions in the comments and then come every week for about a half hour to learn some stuff about different things either happening at the Schuylkill Center or just different topics about nature. So I will be your host this evening as always and I am really excited about tonight's topic. It is something very near and dear to my heart personally, as well as near and dear to the hearts of everyone at the Schuylkill Center. We are going to talk and learn about Pine Grove, a beloved installment of the Schuylkill Center grounds, and we're going to learn about the star of Pine Grove, which is of course the pine tree. It is a special, amazing, big personality of a plant that we're going to talk all about. It's interesting enough to take up more than a half hour of time, but that's about all I have, so we'll, we'll stick to that. If you have any questions, comments about tonight's segment, please put them in the comments. I am answering questions and comments and reading through everything live while we do this discussion, and that's what makes the discussion super fun. So, any, also any topics that you would like to suggest for future weeks, please feel free to leave those in the comments as well. And of course, as always, check out our website, our Facebook page, our Instagram for things happening in and about the Schuylkill Center area for the rest of the summer and for the foreseeable future. We have some amazing online programming going on. So let's talk a little bit about what Pine Grove is. If like I said in our post leading up to this event, if you have been to the Schuylkill Center recently, if you've been keeping up with our, no our news, you might know that Pine Grove, again a beloved area of the Schuylkill Center, was recently destroyed by a really wild storm about a month ago now. And the land and facilities crew is still working really hard to get it back in order because it is a place loved by campers and the public, children and adults alike. It's a place the staff is always a favorite of. So we're trying to get it back. But if you've ever been to Prine Grove while it was still in working order, it is a very intriguing place in that really throughout it, you really only will see those white pine trees. That's the species of pine tree that we have and at Pine Grove and it's it's an odd place because no other place in the forest at the Schuylkill Center or as far as I've explored in a lot of other places has only a single variety of species all over it. Pine trees when you see them you tend to only see pine trees in an area and there's very few plants that can coexist with it. So a little bit about Pine Grove. The trees actually grow in rows on, in Pine Grove. And when you're walking around, you'll see those perfect rows placed. They're very even looking. They're very unnatural looking. And in fact, they are unnatural. Those trees did not just drop there in those perfect lines. So the Schuylkill Center was farmland and agriculture until the 1960s. And then it turned into a nature center that we know and love today. And in the 1970s, the there was a plot of land where a bunch of white pine trees were planted for tinder harvesting by staff and volunteers and that was the beginning the origin of pine grove now like i said they were planted in with intention to harvest because pine trees are excellent for furniture building they're common for christmas trees and they're common for home construction projects as well really strong tree that lends really well to being used as tinder and being harvested. It actually never came to fruition, that harvesting, that tinder collection, and today it exists as a beloved, beautiful place, pine trees galore, easy to climb those trees, kids and adults alike love to build forts, so you will go there on any given day and the place both looks the same and at the same time somehow completely different. It's really, really beautiful, serene, in my opinion, magical, amazing environment and space. So 
The pine tree, the eastern white pine, is a fascinating tree, fascinating species, and we're going to talk all about it today. Now, the eastern white pine is the largest native conifer in the eastern United States, and it grows really, really fast. It grows about 50 to 80 feet, sometimes though 100 feet tall in its lifetime, and it does grow really fast. It can grow about two feet a year, sometimes give or take a little more even, and it will, at its full maturity, it will have a spread of about 20 to 40 feet. So it's a pretty massive, really fast growing tree in good conditions, and it survives really heartily and really easily. So it's a really popular tree also for um, planting in yards. It grows really well in succession in disturbed areas, in fields. So it is a great tree to have around. But other plants do have trouble growing under it. So when you're walking along a forest or in an area with white pine trees or really with any type of pine tree, you'll notice that there's not a lot of other plants growing underneath it. And this takes place for a few reasons. Um, mostly pine trees like to grow in acidic soil and a lot of other plants have trouble growing in similarly acidic soil. So pine trees are able to get rid of a ton of competition right off the bat just because of that. The other thing about pine trees is that they, because I talked about that spread that they have with their top branches of 20 to 40 feet, that is massive amount of spread and so the pine trees create a lot of shade and plants underneath them have a lot of trouble competing for sunlight it's really shady in an area with a lot of pine trees the other reason is that pine trees have these pine needles right here which we will talk more about but as the needles start to fall off they will create it create a blanket on the bed floor which is nice and soft if you're in an emergency and you need to find a place to rest for a little while nice and soft for a lot of creatures and inhabitants good cover but it is really hard and suffocating for plants coming up out of the ground trying to survive and trying to get that sunlight so acidic soil where they start to grow not enough sunlight and a lot of heavy competition for water pine tree roots tend to really spread out they grow moderately deep but they're still a lot of them the younger roots will be closer to the surface and they will suck up a ton of water and they'll retain a lot of water as well so really difficult to compete for water. Now there is a common myth suggesting that the pine needle acidity itself, because pine needles do have acid properties, contributes directly to the acidity of the surrounding soil and de deliberately makes it difficult for other plants to grow. This is actually, as it turns out, a myth because pine needles, while they are green, and actually these ones are a few days old by now, even more than a few days old because I found them off the ground as well. They, the green ones though, will be acidic, but when they fall to the forest floor and they turn brown, they are no longer acidic. So really, the pine needles serve best in that blanketing and that suffocating of other plants, more so than being able to actually change the acidity and the pH of the soil in a substantial enough way that it would kill plants just due to the acidity of the soil alone. The needles don't stay acidic for long enough to really make that difference. So those are most of the reasons that a lot of other plants cannot and will not grow near pine trees. There are some plants that are more resistant to acid, more tolerant of shadier, cooler temperatures, and don't need a lot of water. So there are some plants that can survive and do in a couple of kinds of grasses. But for the most part, when you walk into a heavily pine treed area, it's only pine. And that is Something that is so unique and interesting about those types of habitats is that it is it is unique to walk into a space and see not too much variety of plants in the middle of a forest. It's really, really interesting. And people do ask us all the time at the Google Center whether or not we are maintaining 
that space mowing around it, stopping other plants from surviving. And no, it is entirely a self-maintaining process and a self-maintaining habitat. It's amazing. So, um, more information about the white pine tree. Pine trees tend to respond a lot to fire. A lot of types of pine trees actually need fire in order to correctly reproduce. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But pine, white pine trees as a species are moderately uh, fire resistant. The adult pine trees have really thick bark and they also have a moderately deep root system, which means that in a low grade fire and even a medium grade fire, adult pine trees will be okay. They will not entirely be killed and they will make a comeback after a fire, as long as their roots are deep enough and are not harmed enough. Young pine trees, however, do not yet have that strong enough bark. They don't have enough roots, so they will often succumb to a fire. So those have that has that information has a lot of implications in terms of planting white pine trees in your yard, which as I said, it is a very common and popular and great native plant to have in your yard. It creates a lot of habitat space. Uh, like I said, it is native. However, you always want to be careful about having fires or, you know, even grilling sometimes, anything that's going to lead to fire, you want to make sure you're keeping it far away from a pine tree because it is flammable enough. It'll go, it'll go up. So let's talk about the seeds of pine trees. Now, does anybody know where the seeds of pine trees come from? The seeds of pine trees come inside of a pine cone, like so. And I collected these two pine cones at the Schuylkill Center right here. I have two different sizes. These are both female pine cones. The interesting thing, another interesting thing about the pine tree is actually that it has both male and female pine cones on it. So the female pine cones are long, they are slender, they're about three to six inches long, generally speaking. And the male pine cones, so these are both females. The male pine cones, which I was not able to get a hold of, they grow in clusters. They're much smaller, they're only about one inch long. So really obvious difference there. Really easy to tell whether or not you're holding looking at a male or female pine cone. The fact that male and female pine cones grow together on the same tree is very interesting, very unique. Um, so pine cones start to be produced when the tree is about five to 10 years old, so it does take a while. Um, but really good seeds quantitatively do not occur until the tree is around 20 years old. So it takes a long time for of growth for that tree to be able to produce enough seeds um, to have viable options for reproduction. Now, cones will drop later in the summer and they will open up when they're dropped. And then the seeds are beloved by a lot of different animals, both birds, chipmunks, squirrels, other animals as well. And they will munch on those seeds inside the pine cone. They will go their separate ways and they'll usually poop them out or they'll drop them from their mouths as they're walking away. And that is mostly how those seeds are dispersed. The seeds are also dispersed from the wind. Now the interesting thing about pine, white pine cones too, is that they actually do not need fire to open the cones. Some other species of pine trees and of evergreen trees that have pine cones actually do need fire to open the cone at all and drop the seed. Because some pine trees will have a coat of resin outside of them which must be melted off by a fire of a certain high enough temperature before it will pop out those seeds. So those, that's really interesting for trees that grow particularly on the east coast in highly populated areas where we do not often do controlled burns of, of forested areas, right? In a lot of places 
we now know that fires are, are in fact very healthy for forests and for habitats and ecosystems and there are controlled burns done but in heavily populated areas that can be really hard to do because even a controlled fire can very quickly and easily become uncontrolled and if it happens too close to a population of people that is a nightmare scenario obviously so we are seeing a decline in a lot of different types of pine trees across the united states where there are not enough uh, resources for and availability for controlled burns unfortunately luckily white pines do not fall into that category so we are seeing an uptick in the amount of white pines we're seeing they were over harvested for timber um years and years ago and there have been different initiatives throughout the years to try and plant more and bring that population back and in some areas that has succeeded those initiatives has have succeeded more than others but we do have a a, a stable enough population of white pine trees so let's talk about pine needles pine needles themselves are super fascinating pine needles are what leaves right pine needles are leaves they are specially adapted leaves because pine trees are evergreens which means they are green year-round their leaves do not fall off in the winter time and this is so pine needles are a really interesting adaptation like I said and they are meant to be able to hold water in the plant in times of drought in times of severe cold in times of severe hot even sometimes so pine needles are a really special adaptation and trait in pine trees that allow them to stay and maintain their greenness and their water all year round now for a white pine tree you can always or you can almost always tell when you are looking at a white pine tree because the pine needles grow in groups of five so here I have five needles I don't know if you can see them all but we have five needles and they grow from these little points here all along five each in all of those and the easy way to remember that is that there is one needle for every letter of the word white, white pine. Five letters, five needles per thing. So um, that is not, of course, a rule that can't be broken. Sometimes you'll see only three, sometimes four, sometimes two. They do fall off. But if you look at enough of the spots, you will start to notice it should be an average of five. So that is how you can tell a white pine tree from a bunch of other pine trees now like i said those pine needles are acidic when they are green but the minute they are brown they are no longer acidic and the interesting thing about pine needles actually is that pine needles have up to three to five times more vitamin c than an orange or a lemon so what does this mean who cares about vitamin C? Well, we know that vitamin C to humans is extremely important for immune health, and vitamin C is something that we do get from citrus, we do get um, from some of the foods we eat, and sometimes we get it by taking a supplement every day. Pine needles, if you are able to make it correctly, a pine needle tea is an extraordinary vitamin C supplement. That is completely herbal and healthy for you organic what have you so pine needle tea um, what you need are half a cup of pine needles and three cups of water and you want to boil the water first now you can't boil the pine needles because boiling the pine needles will leach out all of the vitamin C it will no longer have it so first you boil the water you bring it down to a simmer you put in the pine needles for about 20 minutes making sure that it's just a simmer not a boil to preserve that vitamin C and then you can serve it immediately or you can leave it overnight you can serve it cold everything in moderation of course drinking a ton of pine needle tea has its 
interesting strange effects can be bad for your health but it tastes amazing if you just drink it in moderation and if you are able to get a hold of bright green brand new leaves those are the best leaves for pine needle tea they will be fragrant they will be the most tasty and flavorful and they won't be super earthy piney almost like turpentiney which you will get from older darker green needles you can also throw in a piece of bark into that simmering pine needle tea because the bark actually has even more vitamin c than the pine needles do now some of the benefits of pine needle tea it has it's been seen to have healing and nutritional powers cancer prevention immune health boost there's that vitamin c cardiovascular health and it is also known to be an excellent antioxidant and the reason for this is i mentioned those pine needle adaptations for cold weather the needles show heightened um, antioxidant activity uh, to protect the cells from both extreme cold and extreme hot temperatures so a lot of antioxidants packed into these tiny pine needles here those are really important now yes so I went over that recipe now we don't ever want to be pulling things from the pine trees we really don't need to if you walk onto a pine forest floor you'll see plenty of green pine needles the wind the rain they bring pine needles down so it is really really easy to forage for pine needles without having to pull stuff down from the tree and harm the plant or take away resources from the plant which is always better to do that so that is pine needle tea it is a really really it's spectacular i have had it myself i've never put the bark in it though so if you try it with the bark let me know if you get a super piney scent or taste or anything like that if you're not into tea you don't really want to forage for it another thing you can do is simply put it in that simmering water and then literally just let it simmer because it creates that beautiful amazing piney smell that'll make you feel like you're on a hike in a pine forest in your kitchen and the rest of your house kyle asks what's your favorite tea made from local foraging this is an easy one i love stinging nettle tea so much that i could drink it every day stinging nettle tea briefly uh is a tea made from of course stinging nettles which uh you can find quite easily around the schuylkill center you don't want to touch them with your bare hands they will sting they cause an irritant on their leaves but if you can pick them with a really strong pair of gardening or winter gloves and you take a giant handful of new leaves you put it into water you let it steep for about 15 20 minutes delectable earthy kind of sweet taste it's amazing another tea that has a lot of immune boost antioxidant really really super good for you that is my favorite tea for sure so um as i have been mentioning throughout this there is a lot of wildlife that makes use from pine trees and a lot of wildlife that i personally have seen at the Schuylkill Center. Now, here are some pictures I'm going to show you of specific animals that I have seen at Pine Grove at the Schuylkill Center. And then I'll talk about a couple animals I definitely have not seen, but that are known to inhabit, inhabit areas of a lot of pine. So this first one, what do we have here? That is an owl, of course. So owls inhabit those pine trees. Um, they will hunt for rodents on the ground, which also love those pine cones and those seeds and that tree cover. And the owl makes great use of its own camouflage abilities through these up here tufts. These are commonly referred to as the ears of the owl. For those that have it, this is a great horned owl, but they of course are not actually ears, but rather they are an adaptation on the owl that helps it camouflage because at night, when something is round in the tree, trees themselves don't have too many things that are round. So it helps if you have tufts sticking up out of your round head that look like branches. 
you're way better off camouflaging that way than if you just have your round head sticking out in the middle of the trees. So owls will frequent the Schuylkill Center. I have found owl pellets out there, some owl feathers sometimes. We actually do in normal times lead an owl prowl that will go out there at nighttime and try and look for owls. I have also seen turkeys at Pine Grove. So turkeys, another animal that you can tell is really good at camouflaging in a place like a pine area with all of those brown and reddish colors. Plenty of these creatures, chipmunks here, love those seeds of the pine cones, love foraging. They love to make use of the cavities that come from the trees that are really easy hiding spots and nesting spots. And finally, toads. Now this toad is not the American toad that frequents Pine Grove, but it is an example of another toad. We have a ton of toads, sizes big and small, at Pine Grove that, again, do really, really well camouflaging there, and they will often pass that area by on their way to or from a pond during their migration. So those are a lot of animals that we'll see. Now, in other pine areas that are further from cities, that are much more remote, black bears love pine tree areas. They use it for cover, and they use it to climb up in all the time for safety purposes, especially the cubs. Pine trees are well known to have numerous strong long branches that are easy to climb and like I had mentioned in our pine grove children are always climbing as well as adults are always climbing in those pine trees so they're great for bears and actually some studies where of high black bear populations in other areas in in much more remote you know backcountry areas have noticed that in the springtime, mother bears and their cubs will spend up to 90% of their time within 600 feet of a white pine or an eastern hemlock tree. That, um, and that is for climbing and safety purposes. Maybe mom is teaching babies how to climb or if they need quick coverage. So obviously these evergreen trees that provide all of this coverage, camouflage, hiding spots are really important even for our larger species. We also do have a fox den close to Pine Grove. So we know that there are foxes coming in and out of there. Anywhere where ro that attracts rodents, chipmunks, squirrels, mice, will attract a lot of other creatures that will eat them as well. And we have a lot of carnivorous creatures in Philadelphia at the Schuylkill Center that will love to feed on rodents. So the fact that rodents are hanging out in these places is super important. This is a really, really important ecosystem. Kyle, did I hear you right that there are wild turkeys in Philadelphia? There are, I have seen them myself. Not often, I have seen turkeys on two separate occasions at the Schuylkill Center and I have seen them in different parks further from Philadelphia, but still within easy driving, a couple hours driving distance. But yes, I have seen wild turkeys at Pine Grove and at the Schuylkill Center. Really, really cool. And then the last thing that I'll talk about about the white pine, of course the white pine is not without its, um, its problems. It grows really well in cool summers and with good conditions, however it is susceptible to plenty of insect and disease problems. The, the two most prominent issues that the pine tree is susceptible to would be the white pine weevil, which is a type of beetle that grows or that comes along to the white pine tree, and the white pine blister rust, which is a type of fungus that is invasive, comes from Asia, and both of these have serious, serious implication complications when it comes to the white pine tree they can the weevil can kill a pine tree within a few years i am not sure how long the fungus takes to kill a pine tree but either of these issues can be solved and controlled either mechanically i.e cutting off parts of the pine tree that are showing either this beetle or this fungus or chemically in terms of the white pine beetle. You can spray for it when you start to see the larva on that bark. 
So, and when you're taking out the, the fungus, the white pine blister rust from that pine tree, you want to make sure that you're not spraying its spores everywhere where it could infect other trees in that area. So you wanna either put it in a garbage bag immediately or burn it immediately. And that is the most effective way to get rid of the white pine blister rust. Try saying that five times fast. So that is all I have about the white pine tree. If you have any questions about this super awesome big personality of a tree, please leave them in the comment section so that I can answer them. Or if you have any facts that you would like to add about this tree, please feel free to leave those in the comments along with suggestions for future weekly topics. If you are interested in helping us bring back Pine Grove to working order, right now it is shut down for public use and camp, nobody's going inside of it, it is still a danger zone, please feel free to visit our website or our Facebook to see where you can make a donation. There is a donation button on both of those things and we are actively fundraising for our beloved Pine Grove. So if you watched this segment and you were like, I have to get to Pine Grove now so I can check it out, this sounds so cool, which was the intention of this segment, because it is as cool as it sounds, then feel free to, to help us get it back in working order as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week for another installment of Ask a Naturalist very soon. Have a wonderful evening, and thanks for joining me. Good night.